So, like I mentioned in the past video, I didn't expect to get the Sony WH-1000XM5 so soon. And instead of just outright replacing the 1000XM4s, the 1000XM5s are just going to be a model above the 1000XM4s. Nonetheless, if you're trying to choose between any of Sony's ANC headphone lineup, today we're going to break down Sony's late 2022 ANC headphone lineup. We've got the entry-level Watcha 710N, the Basehead XB910N, the Old Faithful 1000XM4s, and we've got the new kids on the block, the 1000XM5s. Now regarding pricing, the entry-level Watcha 710Ns currently have a retail price of $150, but these headphones now routinely go on sale for $100, and I would only pick them up for $100. And also keep in mind, these are the oldest headphones here, being released in May of 2020. And these are due for an update. Then there are the mid-tier XB910Ns, which were released in the fall of 2021. And they have a retail price of $250, and they like to go on sale for $180. A pretty solid pickup. Next up, there's the 1000XM4s, which have a retail price of $350, but these like to go on sale for $280. Not bad. And then there are the 1000XM4s, which are the successors to the XM4s, and these have a retail price of $400. But just knowing Sony, I expect these to go on sale for $350, give or take. Nonetheless, if you want to pick any of these headphones up, they'll be linked down below. And if you want to further support the channel, check out the merch shelf down below. I made some shirts and hoodies that look and feel great. And if you've been watching me for a while, you know I can be very particular. So I'll only set my name on something that I'm really proud of. Now first, let's address the carrying cases that come included with these headphones. Unfortunately, the Watcha 710Ns don't come included with the case at all, which is a disappointment all around because other entry-level headphones do. But then there are the XB910Ns and 1000XM4s, which both come included with decently small hard shell carrying cases. And part of the reason why these cases are so small is because both of these headphones are fully collapsible. Whereas the XM5s, these have a lay flat design, so their case does have a noticeably larger footprint than these other two headphones. But also, the XM5's case is noticeably thicker than these other two cases as well. So if you plan on constantly traveling with your headphones, the XM5s wouldn't be my first choice because traveling with their case is a hassle, especially when compared to these other two headphones and even the rest of the competition. Now, with the cases out of the way, let's focus on the headphones themselves. From a material standpoint, all of these headphones have a mostly plastic body, and they all have leatherette on their headband and ear pads. However, all of these headphones are using new plastic, except for the XM5s, which are using recycled plastic. And simply put, recycled plastic just doesn't feel as premium as new plastic. And I would argue that both the XB910N and 1000XM4s feel more premium than the 1000XM5s. But also, the leatherette on all of these headphones are very different. The Watcha 710Ns have the worst feeling leatherette here. It's very rough and it's very coarse and it just gets everywhere. The leatherette on the XM4s is okay but it does feel very plasticky. Then there's the leatherette on the XB910Ns which feels much more supple and there's even a slight grain to it. The leatherette on the XB910Ns has Bose vibes to it but it's not as good. And finally there's the XM5s which have all new leatherette to it. The leatherette on the XM5 feels like silicone but with less friction to it. Overall, I prefer the leatherette on the XM5s over the XM4s, but I think the XB910Ns have the best feeling leatherette here. But now let's talk about fit. Now all of these headphones are lightweight. The XM4s weigh in at 254 grams, the XB910Ns weigh in at 252 grams, and surprisingly, the XM5s weigh in at 250 grams, even though they do look pretty bulky. And for comparison's sake, the Bose NC700s weigh in at 274 grams, which is average for premium ANC headphones. And the AirPod Max weigh in at 384 grams, which is very hefty. But finally, there are the Watcha 710Ns, which weigh in at 223 grams, which is average for entry-level ANC headphones. Overall, all of these headphones are decently lightweight, and they're easy enough to forget that you have them on. Now, when it comes to clamping force, all of these headphones are big head approved. However, the XM5s do have the firmest fit here. But that's the least of the XM5's worries here. 
Now, the earpads on the XM5s have a very wide diameter to them, similar to the earpads on the Watcha 710Ns, which also have a wide diameter to them. But the problem here is that both of these earpads are very shallow. They're so shallow that they even press down on my average size ears, which does get uncomfortable after a while. So if you have ears that stick out a lot, then these earpads will might not be the best option for you. But then there are the XM4s and XB910Ns. Now, their diameters aren't as large as the XM5's earpads, but they're much deeper. So both of these headphones are going to do a better job of accommodating more ear types. But technically speaking, the XP910Ns do have the most spacious earpads here, more spacious than the XM4s. So if you have really large ears, then these will might be the way to go. However, the earpads on the XP910Ns aren't as spacious as, let's say, the Bose QC45. And even though the earpads on the XP910Ns are the most spacious here, they do have the most amount of surface area coming in contact with your skin. So these earpads do like to heat up the fastest here. Now, the XP910Ns don't have an overheating problem, but the XM4s do stay a little cooler for a little longer. And then there are the ear pads on both the XM5s and Watcha 710Ns, which stay the coolest for longest because they have the least amount of surface area coming in contact with your skin. But then there are the headbands on these headphones. Now, the Watcha 710N, XP910N, and XM4 all have decently padded headbands and they all have a decent amount of surface area that come in contact with the surface of your head. So with any of these headphones, hotspots are not an issue. And I can easily wear the XM4s or XP910Ns for hours on end because of their padded headbands and decently spacious earpads. But then there are the XM5s. Due to the very thin and minimally padded headband on this new headphone design, I found that this headband likes to create a hot spot on the top of your head after 45 minutes. So at the 45 minute mark, I gotta take these headphones off. So overall for me, the XM5s are the least comfortable headphones here. And they're very uncomfortable in general. Their headband creates a hot spot, their earpads are very shallow, and they have the firmest fit here. Now, the earpads on the Watcha 710Ns are also pretty shallow, but since they have a looser fit, they don't press down as hard on my ears. But then, there are the XP910Ns and XM4s, which are both very comfortable. However, if you need the most spacious earpads here, then you'll want to go with the XP910Ns. But if the XM4s fit you fine, then you'll want to go with the XM4s because their earpads stay a little cooler for a little longer. And finally, I gotta admit, the XM4s are the sleekest looking headphones here, whereas the headband on both the XP910N and XM5s look pretty bulbous. But now let's talk about tech specs, and there aren't any major differences here. Now with the XP910Ns, XM4s, and XM5s, they can all go for as long as 30 hours with their active noise cancellation turned on, whereas with the Watcha 710Ns, they can go for as long as 35 hours. And in general, all of these headphones have above average battery lives. But if you were to use these headphones with their active noise cancellation turned off, the Watcha 710Ns can go for as long as 45 hours, the XM5s can go for as long as 40 hours, and both the XM4s and XB910Ns can go for up to 38 hours. Now, when it comes to charging these headphones, they all charge via a USB-C port as they should. But fast charging numbers are a little different here. With the Watcha 710Ns, if you were to charge them up for 10 minutes from a dead battery, they're gonna get you one hour of playback time. Whereas with the XB910Ns, they're going to get you four and a half hours of playback time, and the XM4s are going to get you five hours of playback time. But then there are the XM5s where if you charge them up for three minutes, they're gonna get you three hours of playback time. Personally, I think Sony should have gone with five and five, but it's whatever. Regarding Bluetooth connectivity, all of these headphones, except for the Watcha 710Ns, can be connected to any two devices at the same time, which is good if you're a power user. However, if you want to use this feature, then you are going to have to sacrifice cell deck. Now, if you're an iPhone user, this doesn't really matter because iPhones top out at AAC. And if you're an Android user, AAC is going to be perfectly fine if you're just streaming your music. 
However, when it comes to performance, all of these headphones have zero latency across the board when watching movies or videos on your phone, whether you're an iPhone or an Android user. And when it comes to audio codecs, the Watcher 710 Ns only have support for SBC and the AAC, which is a pretty standard stack for a pair of entry-level headphones. But then there are all of these other headphones and they have support for SBC, AAC, and Sony's own LDAC, which is their own in-house high-res audio codec. Now, none of these headphones have AppDAC support because Sony has phased out AppDACs in favor of LDAC. However, if you want to take advantage of LDAC, first off, you have to be an Android user and these headphones are only going to be able to be connected to one device at a time. But if you want, you can always just use a wired connection with any of these headphones because thankfully they all still have a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. And I am thankful that all of these headphones still have an audio jack because I was very worried that Sony would copy Apple and remove the audio jack on their headphones. And personally, I still feel that that was a very foolish mistake on Apple's part. But I do have to point out that you can't use the USB-C port on any of these headphones as a wired connection and you can't use them while they're charging but you can always still use them passively. But now let's talk about listening to music with these headphones because all of these headphones sound very different from one another. Now first, let's start with the Wacha 710Ns. Personally, I don't really like listening to music with these headphones because these headphones have a bass heavy EQ to them and they do sound rather shallow. If you want to actually hear the mids and highs on these headphones, then you gotta turn them all the way up. And since these headphones do sound rather shallow, they do make it very hard to hear what people are saying when you're watching movies with these headphones. And unfortunately, unlike all of these other headphones, the Wetcha 710Ns don't have an adjustable EQ. So you can't change how they sound directly. They don't even connect to Sony's headphones app, period, which is something their predecessors did do. So besides not being able to adjust their EQ, you're also not going to get any firmware updates on these headphones, and these headphones need them. But now let's turn our attention to the XP910Ns and 1000XM4s. Now from a performance standpoint, the XP910Ns and XM4s have the same instrument separation and soundstage. And overall, both of these Sony headphones sound good. However, if you want something that sounds more open, then you might want to go with something from Bose or Sennheiser. But overall, Sony's headphones are people pleasers. Whether you like a neutral EQ or bass heavy EQ, these headphones should have you covered and you can make them sound however you want. And the bass on the XM4s have enough physicality to satiate most people that want to physically feel their music. However, if you really like bass, then you might want to go with the XP910Ns. The XP910Ns have an above average amount of bass to them, so they're going to rattle your head way more than the XM4s. Having the clear bass slider on the XM4s set to 10 is like having the bass on the XP910Ns set to 6. Now, all of this bass is just dumb fun when listening to music, but it also adds an extra level of immersiveness when you're watching a movie with these headphones. Now personally, I love that the XP910Ns have this extra bass feature and I wish the XM4s also had this feature. But if you don't want to, you don't have to use this feature. You can always just turn it off by lowering the clear bass slider on the XP910Ns. But finally, there are the 1000XM5s. Now unfortunately, these headphones don't have as much physicality in their bass as either the XM4s and especially XP910Ns. However, what the XM5s do have going for them is that they have better instrument separation and they sound more open than any of these other headphones. Now, even though the XM5s do have improved instrument separation, they still don't sound as open as a pair of Bose or Sennheiser headphones. So, even though technically the XM5s sound better than all of Sony's other headphones here, I feel that your average listener is going to miss that thump in the bass. And given that the instrument separation between the XM5s and XM4s and XB910Ns is a very small one. I feel that the XM4s are going to do a better job of being people pleasers, and if you want something with an above average amount of bass, then the XB910Ns are the way to go. Now when it comes to actually controlling your media, the Wacha 710Ns are using physical buttons, whereas all of these other headphones are using touchpads. Now the touchpads on all of these headphones are easy enough to use, and they're very 
accurate. Now, they're not perfect, but they aren't problematic either, like some other touchpads out there. But both the XM5s and XM4s have wear sensors. So whenever you take these headphones off, they'll automatically pause your music, and then when you put them back on, they'll start playing your music again. Now, the fact that the wear sensors on the XM5s are hidden versus the exposed wear sensors on the XM4s isn't a big deal. But regardless, I don't really care for wear sensors on my headphones, so I usually just turn that feature off, but they're there if you want them. But now let's talk about the active noise cancellation on these headphones. Obviously, as you move up in price, these headphones are going to block out more noise. And thanks to the XM5s, Sony is back to being the king of ANC after being dethroned by the AirPod Max for the last year and a half. But so that you can see for yourself, we're going to jump into an ANC test. So like you may have just seen, as you move up Sony's product lineup, they block out more noise. Now the Watch s 710Ns block out an adequate amount of noise for a pair of entry-level ANC headphones. Now these headphones don't block out a ton of noise and I wouldn't recommend them for flying, but they can help out on your bus ride home. Next up, there are the XP910Ns and these block out noticeably more noise than the Watch 710Ns. They block out more road noise and they do a better job of blocking out chatter, so these can help out if you're using them in a cafeteria or something. Then there are the XM4s which block out more noise than the XP910Ns. Plus, they have an atmospheric pressure sensor, so they're going to perform noticeably better than the XP910Ns if you're in an airplane after they've been calibrated. And finally, there are the XM5s, which also have an atmospheric pressure sensor, and they block out even more noise than the XM4s. Not only do they block out more constant lower frequency sounds like road noise, they also do a much better job of blocking out higher frequency sounds like chatter, which was an issue for the XM4s. However, even though the XM5s block out more noise than the XM4s, they do have noticeably more cabin pressure. So if you're sensitive to cabin pressure like I am, then you might want to be cautious about the XM5s, but the XM4s, XP910Ns, and Watcha 710Ns are much safer bets because they all have much less cabin pressure. But next up, let's talk about the ambient modes on these headphones. Now, all these headphones have a decent sounding ambient mode. However, with the Watcha 710Ns, you can't adjust it to your liking, whereas with all of these other headphones, you can. Now, the microphone array on both the XP910Ns and XM4s do a good job of blocking out when noise when walking outdoors. But the microphone array on the XM5s is much faster to pick up wind noise. But overall, I am gonna have to say that both the XM4s and XP910Ns have better ambient modes than the XM5s because they will actively block out sudden loud noises like this. So like you may have just seen, when the XM4s detected that loud noise, they turned off their ambient mode, and when that loud noise stopped, they turned their ambient mode back on. And here are the XP910Ns. Thank you. 
Now, the XB910Ns performed like the XM4s, which is good, but I think they let in more noise because I don't think that they passively block out as much noise as the XM4s. But regardless, I do want to highlight the XB910Ns here because when they initially released, they didn't do this, and I hope that Sony fixes the active ambient mode on the XM5s through a firmware update because they also don't do this. So like you just saw with the XM5s, they turned off their ambient mode, but then they turned it back on and then they turned it back off and then back on again. I just hope Sony fixes this through a software update like they did with the XB910Ns because there's no reason why the XM5s can't get this right. But then there's speak to chat which is found on both the XM4s and XM5s, but the XB910Ns don't have this feature. But speak to chat works a little like this. Hello there. So this is speak to chat. Basically, when I start talking, these headphones will automatically lower the volume of your music and pump in all of the ambient sound around you so they can quickly talk to someone without having to touch the headphones themselves. Now, these headphones will stay in this state for a preset determined amount of time, which you can adjust through the app or you can cancel speak to chat by double tapping on the touchpad like this. But personally, I'm not a really big fan of speak to chat because it's very easy to accidentally activate it. If you're talking to yourself very quietly, that's going to activate it. If you're singing along to your music, that's definitely going to activate it. If you start laughing, that's going to activate it. And on rare occasions, if there's a loud enough outside noise, then that's going to activate it as well. So that's why I don't use this feature. Personally, I prefer to use quick attention because it's a lot more intentional and this feature is found on the XB910Ns, XM4s, and XM5s. And basically, whenever you fully cover the touchpad on any of these headphones, you're going to lower the volume of your music and pump in all of the ambient sound around you so that you can quickly talk to someone without having to take your headphones off like this. And when you let go, the headphones will go back to normal again. Now, like I mentioned earlier, I do prefer quick attention over speak to chat because it's a lot more intentional. But Sony still refuses to simply just lock quick attention after it's been activated for a few seconds so that you can just simply let go of the touchpad and have your hands free like you can with a lot of other headphones that have a similar feature. Instead, you still gotta keep the touchpad covered the whole time that you're using quick attention. And this does get awkward and uncomfortable after a while. So I just want Sony to fix it. I mean, come on, it's a simple fix. But finally, here's the microphone test. Now I'm gonna be straight up, the microphone on the Watch 710Ns is pretty bad. Personally, I wouldn't even try to take phone calls with this microphone. Next up, there are the XB910Ns, which have a decent enough sounding microphone while in a quiet room. Then there are the 1000 XM4s, which I feel have a slightly better sounding microphone than the XB910Ns, but while in a quiet room. And then there are the XM5s, which do an even better job of focusing on my voice. Now, in general, Sony has always struggled with their microphones for phone calls. But after five generations, Sony finally has a usable microphone. Because the really impressive thing about this microphone is the way that it deals with noise pollution. Because right now, this microphone is blocking out a ton of vocals. And for comparison's sake, if we were to switch over to a Mellon Pearl microphone, you're going to clearly hear all of this road noise. But if we were to switch back over to the XM5s, it's severely reduced. Whereas the XM4 is just completely fall apart when it comes to blocking out road noise. There's a lot of static in the background when I'm talking. Whereas with the XB910Ns, they do a much better job of dealing with this road noise. Now, there is some interference going on with my voice, but this sounds a lot better than the mess going on with the XM4s. 
And finally, here are the Witches 10X, where my voice doesn't just sound super shallow to begin with, this microphone doesn't block out any more noise at all. However, when it comes to blocking out chatter, it's not completely awful, but I still wouldn't try to take phone calls with this microphone. Whereas with the XP910Ns, they do a decent job of blocking out chatter. And so do the XM4s. There isn't as much static in the background when I'm talking when this microphone is blocking out noise, And this microphone does an okay job of blocking out chat. I would say that this is usable at least. But then there are the 1000 XM5s which are blocking out a lot of chatter and my voice doesn't sound all that bad. And again, for comparison's sake, if we were to switch over to my lapel microphone, you're gonna clearly hear all of this chatter. But if we were to switch back over to the XM5s, it is severely reduced. So after five generations, Sony finally has a usable microphone on their headphones. So with all that being said, here's my breakdown of Sony's current ANC headphone lineup. The Watch 710 ns are a fine pair of entry-level headphones and they can make for a great pair of workout headphones in the gym. However, don't go in expecting top tier build quality and personally, I don't like their bass heavy sound signature. And I really hate that these headphones don't connect to Sony's headphones app, even though their predecessors did. And I also wouldn't try to take phone calls with these headphones. And I also feel that their upgrade is right around the corner. And I really hope so, cause there's a lot of room for improvement. Then there are the Sony XP910Ns. And overall, these are a great pair of mid-tier ANC headphones that you really can't go wrong with because they do everything very well. But their standout characteristic is their bass. It's really dumb fun and it adds an extra level of immersiveness when watching movies with these headphones. I just personally really don't like how they look. And finally, there's the XM4 versus XM5 debate. Now, yes, the XM5s block out more noise than the XM4s and they have a much better sounding microphone as well. But personally, I just find the all new design on the XM5s a major hassle and downgrade from the XM4s design. The XM5s just aren't as comfortable because of their shallow ear cuffs and headband that causes a hotspot, and their new huge case is borderline unmanageable if you plan on traveling with these headphones on a regular basis. So personally, from a performance standpoint, the XM5s just don't make a big enough case to upgrade from the XM4s. But more importantly, the XM4s are just way more comfortable to wear and their case is much more convenient. The only reason why you might want to go with the XM5s is because you need to block out the absolute most amount of noise and if you plan on taking lots of phone calls while in a noisy environment. If you made it this far, I guess you enjoyed the video, so hit the like button and get subscribed. If you want to pick any of the products up, they'll be linked down below. And if you want to further support the channel, check out the merch. I made some shirts and hoodies that look and feel great. And you know I can be very particular, so I'll only slap my name on something if I'm really proud of it.